It's easy. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Quantum Witch Cafe, your safe space to talk about anything fringe, paranormal, occult, bookish, tabooish, whatever. We talk about it all here. Tonight, I have the honor of having T.A. Cruz, who's a wonderful author on. I want to thank everybody before we get started for listening now or later. And I really need to put these on Spotify because uh, I'm slacking, but I need to do it because more people listen there than they do on YouTube. But welcome wherever you are, whenever you're listening. The book that he has written is called Have You Seen Sarah Baker? And it's um, it's a thriller, but I'm going to let him tell you about this. But first, T.A. Cruz, who are you? Who hurt you? Because you write some twisty things. And uh, what what is what is your genre like? You know, just tell me about yourself. Like, who are you? How did you get started? And and you know, how did you start writing? Um, so I am T. A. Cruz. I generally write uh, thrillers, anything dark and twisty. Um, you're not going to find a happily ever after in this fantasy <laughs> kind of deal. Uh, I like to write anything that is just disturbing. Um, I aim for the shock factor when it comes to anything I'm writing. I want to leave all of my readers second guessing themselves. And then when everything comes to a head, that's when that, that light bulb comes on and they audibly gasp, if you will. That's, that's the moment I hope for with all of my books. Uh, as far as when I got started writing, I started writing in 2016. I had a very vivid dream that I just kind of jotted down on my on the notes app on my phone and I was rereading it. I want to see either that day or the next day. I was like, this kind of sounds like a book. And so I went from there with my uh, first project. Okay, so all your books are thrillers, you said? Is that what you would consider your writing? Um, for the most part, I write thrillers. I, I do love the dark and disturbing. I've been a horror fan for as long as I can remember. Uh, my first book was actually a young adult fantasy. And then my second book was a sci-fi action comedy. So... Um, I, I kind of took a leap. I went with what I really loved and I really loved doing and like consuming. And that's definitely the dark and disturbing. Yeah. You kind of pissed me off a lot. <laughs> when you were in this book. Um, and now I'm going to read your other books. Uh, I couldn't shut up about it. Like I kept seeing your, your, your TikTok videos pop up and they were just done so well. Like the one that like the day I ordered, I feel it was the one where, you had this video where it was like people were being interviewed about Sarah missing. And it was just these people like going, have you, you know, like, have you seen Sarah Baker? And I was just like, this is so good. Like, I can't not order this anymore. So you definitely like pounded it into my head to where I stepped away from like vampires and, and spooky romance to, to read something that wasn't that. And it was just so good. Um, I loved the book. I, don't know. Did I write you a review? I want to say you did. I tried to not I check. I will. So much. <laughs> yeah, that, that could be nerve wracking. Um, yeah. But if I, did, I will. Um, this is a book again. You'll have to look at this in the mirror or learn how to read backwards like a little demon. But I loved it. I loved it. I read it. It, it took me a while to read it only because I have kids and I was like editing my own work. But I did not see a lot of the twists that you have in there and you're definitely right. Like you said it, so I can say it, but if you guys are into happy endings, you're going to have to read something else or I kind of like read this. I need your heart to get ripped out and I need you to be mad because I was so mad. I was like messaging him. He probably regretted like friending me. <laughs> that was like, what are you doing? <laughs> what did you do? Um, and if you do read it and you are just as equally upset, please send, Priscilla, all your um, unhappy messages. Oh my gosh, yeah. Send me your your, your angry mail for Tay Cruz and I'll just make a beautiful video for just you guys. A little collage. A little heat collage. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, you guys need to read it. It's I was just maybe I just don't I don't know. I was just like, this is not I loved it because Mom. the ending was so like, you know. Mom. Oh gosh. Sorry. Oh, no, no worries. Sorry, guys. There's an important question from one of the kids regarding bananas. 
we don't have any bananas. Anyways, <laughs> <laughs> they're supposed to be in bed, but that's what happens when dads put them to bed. Do you have little ones? I have a 14 now, 14 year old daughter. She just oh, turned 14. So she, she goes to bed when you tell her to? Um, she, <laughs> I told her I was going live and she said, okay. And she took her time and then danced in the hallway when I was setting up <laughs> my camera. Um, so yes, I completely <laughs> understand. Awesome. So, so what was your inspiration? So this is your latest book, right? We, yes, this okay. is technically my debut novel. Oh, okay, because I saw that you had other things. So I guess that's a good question. What what determines, you know, your debut novel versus the other things you've worked on? Um, so my original debut was under a different name. It was under my pen name. And um, it was with a, a small press that went bankrupt within a couple weeks of me publishing it. So naturally the release was horrid and it was not an experience i hope for any other author out there because it was not a good time it it made me take kind of a hiatus from writing for a couple years so 10 out of 10 don't recommend um definitely do your research on who you're publishing with because it can bite you yeah and that's good if you're a writer to know that so what was your inspiration for this for have you seen Sarah Baker? Because it's a very, like, it's, it's such a good story. But where did this come from? So the, the original idea was from actually the, the first chapter of the book. That was, I just started writing it one day. I didn't know where it was going to lead to. Um, I imagined a woman chained in the basement. A man comes down the stairs just slowly, hands her a plate of food walks back up the stairs, doesn't say a word to her. And then I started to dive deeper into who is this woman that's being held captive. And I can't go into too much detail on how I kind of plotted out her character without spoiling the book. But um, I want to say there was a lot of news stories around that time where this seemed kind of like a trend in uh, local high schools. So... I took that and ran with it. Yes, that that's pretty, um, from reading the book, that, that makes sense. And I, I think mm -hmm. I talked to you about it too after I read the book. Mm -hmm. But so what is, what is you, your writing style like? Like, do you plot everything out or are you um, what people call a pantser? Like, do you just kind of have like your general idea and you just go from there? Um, because I know so many people that have to like plot out every single thing. Like I see these crazy spreads they have up like on their computers and it's like a timeline and then like little things coming off of that. And that just like looks scary to me. So what is your writing style? Like, um, you know, your, um, your creative process, I guess. I wish I was that organized that I could have an entire spreader. I, I, I cannot. I, um, so I know there's plotter and pantser. I think I'm a little bit of both. So I had the original ending which is still in the book today, um, in my head from kind of the get-go of where it was going to go. And then um, I'm essentially just building to that point. Uh, I don't plot out my chapters. I write it. If it sucks, I'll keep, I will toss it. If it's good, I'll keep it kind of deal. But I, I don't like to force things to happen. I would rather it happen organically. Yes, and I know a lot of writers say that their characters kind of just act out sometimes as they're writing. Like the character sort of starts doing, and this is going to sound super wild if you're not a writer or if you have a horrible imagination. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not laughing at you. I'm like, ah, oh, you don't have an imagination. But like, um, so like a lot of times when people are writing, they'll say like, I don't know why my character just did that. And then it sounds super wild because we are creating these characters but a character just kind of like grows on its own. Were there any characters in this book that did that to you that kind of like did, um, did things as you were writing that you didn't expect? Um, yes, yes. There's, I mean, one main character in this book that definitely did a lot of things that I would not condone or expect. Um, also a lot of other side characters that, uh, 
I don't know, just kind of flew off the handle. It, it's it's weird because you're absolutely right. You know, everyone pictures authors just the puppet master behind the scenes, but when when you fully craft a character, they tend to have a mind of their own, and the only thing that you're doing is getting in the mind of that character. Okay, what would this character do now? So it, it can become um, quite chaotic when you're writing. Yeah, for sure. What what sort of things did you have to research that made you think like, oh man, now the FBI is gonna watch me? Oh, there's too many to count. Um, how to get blood out of fabric. That was uh, one. How much pressure it would take to um, cave in someone's skull. I'm not, I, this is my first time on this app, so I don't, I've used a TikTok, I, I don't know if it's- No, um, no, so like, <laughs> I I have all like the the backups, so if if somebody did take this down, it'd be fine. Um, but when I do put it on Spotify, everything is marked as eighteen and up and explicit. So okay, I don't I personally don't care if people say bad words or if they um, talk about stuff like that because I'm asking the question. And if that becomes a problem on this particular platform, I will go somewhere else because I have all my videos. So, <laughs> but um. yeah. So yeah, so how much pressure it takes to crush a head? Crush someone's, uh, to essentially cave someone's skull in. Um, mm -hmm. And then I dove a lot into forensics too, as well. Like, can someone be identified with only three teeth in their mouth? You know, it's, it's just, the, the list is endless when it came to this book. It, it took a long time, I wanna say about four years to finish completely before it was published. And so there was a lot of questions I had when it came to um, the dark and disturbing. I was thinking about that when I was reading one of your scenes where you're describing how they find the condition of a certain person in the book. And I was like, I, I so when I started school, I wanted to do forensic pathology. So I was, I was obsessed with like Dr. G, medical examiner, um, and all the weird, creepy stuff like that. Um, and I was looking up like different what just because out of curiosity, like that's what I thought I was gonna do. And I remember spending time in cadaver lab. And it's funny how that stuff comes back to you and once you learn it and you're writing. Um, little things for of all things, my tentacle romance <laughs> short story. <laughs> Somebody's like, wow, the biology part of that was really spot on. I was like, see, I might be in debt like two houses worth in debt and not using the education I have, but I'm using it technically because I got one compliment, there but that's what sticks with you. Do you see yourself writing more, all that to say, do you see yourself writing more, you know, gory thrillers, uh, horror or, or, you know, um, murder mystery, stuff like that? Um, the next book I'm writing is going to outdo Sarah Baker and Spades as far as body count, as far as disturbing, as far as um, thrillers go, you are going to burn through the pages trying to essentially stop what's going to happen and hope that it stops. But it's, it's you know, two trains on a collision course, uh, metaphorically, you, you can't stop it. I like it. Um, <laughs> definitely gonna be a pre-order for me. <laughs> because I've seen your writing now and if you you know a lot of people that read um, like horror thriller might think that like um, the Sarah Baker book was not as like gory but I feel like it was the perfect amount for the story I feel like you you got the main points in for us to be kind of like like grossed out at some points in a good way like from a horror standpoint or a gory standpoint but then it wasn't like over the top like Quentin Tarantino just nonsense, you know, like no reason for it. Like, you know, blood spatter, just for no reason. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, so what kind so oh my gosh, is that all you can tell us about your work in progress? Um, no, I can tell you. Uh the working title is 2325. Uh it's about an air traffic controller that goes out one night, has a few too many drinks, goes to work the next morning, and something catastrophic happens while he's working. And then the second POV is family man takes his wife and daughter to the airport that morning, kisses him on the cheek, says goodbye, and something catastrophic happens that morning. 
Wow. It's so hard to not talk about things too, I'm sure. It's, I mean, um, I, I got the inspiration for this story is something that actually occurred overseas um, regarding an air traffic controller that was involved in an event uh, where a plane had uh, crashed. And the one of the family members actually killed said air traffic controller. So it is loosely, very, very loosely based off of that story. I think that's really cool. It seems like you draw a lot of your inspiration from real life events and then you just make them even worse. <laughs> I mean, in a I good way. Make, in a good way. I gotta make it, I gotta make it familiar. So it, it feels like yeah. it, it could actually happen to you. So, um, that's what I love. I, I, I want, I want the reader to be so immersed in my books that they're making sure their doors locked or they're, double checking their airline ticket, see which seat they're at. I mean, it's, that's, that's my goal. Wow. It sounds like it's going to be really cool. How long did it take you to write? Um, have you seen Sarah Baker? So I started it. I mean, it, it's, it's a, yeah, yeah. It's a thick book. I mean, I started it in 2018 and I want to say I got about 50,000 words in, um, which was about halfway done. And then that's when all the mess happened with my previous publisher. And then that's when I stopped writing. And then in 2020, when COVID hit, I was sent home. Uh, I wasn't working and I was like, I have all this free time. Why not finish the book? So I decided to finish the book after, um, I want to say it was like a, another six months. I probably finished it. And then I spent two years revising it and editing it and, it, it it was a long, painful um, process that I do not regret. It's really hard editing. Like, mm -hmm. It's really hard, especially if you don't have somebody or a lot of people helping you, um, especially starting out. You're just like, oh, my gosh. Like you put the, the spell check on and the grammar check on, and you're like, excuse me? Like 9,000 things I got fixed? <laughs> Why is my manuscript <laughs> red? <laughs> it's like the whole thing's just <laughs> it's just highlighted red. Yeah, it, <laughs> it's definitely important to have um, betas and critique partners. You know, that's that's like I, I want to say I had so many. I, I I detailed them in the acknowledgments, but there's just so many people that have helped me along the way, and it's so important to have those people. Um, you know, cheering you on, uh, fixing, helping fix your mistakes, calling out plot points that don't match or don't add up so yeah very for, helpful. Sure. for sure so what sort of things do you like to watch um you know on your spare time you said you're into like the dark stuff do, do you like to read stuff like that as well or watch stuff like that as well or are you just fine living inside your own story like you I, outside you know um Darkness. Do you have enough darkness inside you? <laughs> <laughs> uh, darkness in spades. More than enough to spare. I watch a lot. I watch everything. Um, guilty pleasure. I'll watch one of the cheesy Hallmark romance movies. I've done it multiple times. It, and I also like to watch The Conjuring as I'm going to bed. I like to watch Dance Moms with my daughter while we're just chilling in the living room. I, I'm open to anything. I think as far as books, the the most read genre for me it has got to be romance because most of my critique partners and beta readers are romance authors. So that's what I'm constantly consuming. But when I'm like pleasure reading or leisure reading, um, I love fantasy. I love, definitely love thrillers. Uh, the last thriller I listened to was Don't Let Her Stay. And that book was phenomenal it was a, a really good one um right now i'm working on the shadow and bone series on my book two of that i've already read the six of crows and crooked kingdom so i'm kind of backtracking um i i'm i'm an open book i like to i like to read everything doesn't matter what it is except cowboy westerns I'm not a cowboy <laughs> <laughs> not into cowboy westerns um you can't make me that's not gonna happen. <laughs> you can't make me. That's that's what your hell would be. You make me read that. Um, I had somebody give me a book, and it was like, um, she was Jessica. If you're watching this, I love you. But I went through this like church stage, believe it or not. 
and because of Jessica, but I had just come back from like Vegas and working in clubs and just being wild. And I was like, okay, time to leave that. Cause you went too crazy. So I'm trying to come back into real life and she starts taking me to church and I'm like, this just feels nice. Cause everybody was so nice. She gives me a Western like gold rush type of book. And she's like, this book made me think of you. So I read it and it's about like a saloon girl that meets some cowboy. <laughs> and then he like saves her. I was like, buddy, this is what you think of me. Oh no. <laughs> I've read a Western sense. <laughs> <laughs> a little filthy saloon girl, you know? <laughs> I was just like <laughs> the cowboy saved me. <laughs> Okay, sorry. I told you this was gonna be a conversation. I'm not. I'm not a journalist. I just like to be nosy. I'm just generally nosy. So That's when funny. I read a book, the whole reason I made this podcast because I was reading things and I was like, I need to talk to the person that wrote this. But I don't really have an excuse as a fan girl. But as a podcaster, I could totally just be like, I'm gonna interview you. So that's how this whole podcast started. I wanted mm -hmm. to talk to this guy that wrote a UFO history book, and a friend of a friend knew him, and he came on. <laughs> and that's yes. how. 70 plus episodes happened. Jeez. Um, yeah, a lot of it's occult and paranormal, but I'm I'm excited to expand, you know, much like you're reading, just kind of read more genres um, and have more different types of authors on, whether it be, you know, um, indie authors or authors for other publishing places, you know, I just, I just want to talk to everybody. So <laughs> I'm excited to have, I think you're my first thriller person. Mm. Yeah, I had a uh, fantasy. Nice. I had I had like a sci-fi fantasy sort of thing um, last year. <laughs> that guy was awesome because he writes like time travel, like what if aliens are us from the future? It's called the extratemporal model. And he wrote a fantasy book. And I was like, finally, I have enough followers to have like the, the, the courage to ask him on. And it's this wild like space sci-fi with like alien spice in it. And the dude showed up and he was just like shamelessly saying cosmic cock. <laughs> <laughs> and I was just like, I need to talk to more fantasy authors. <laughs> and people were having a blast. Michael Master, um, a brilliant man and has a great imagination when it comes to the energetics of space sex. There's my question. Um, <laughs> so what are you reading right now for fun? You said that you're listening to stuff. Do you do a lot of audiobooks? I do a lot of audiobooks. I think that's the main way I consume um, reading, uh, usually on my way to work or while I'm cooking, something like that. Um, right now, I am beta reading slash editing Son of Astoria by J.B. Wright, um, the second book in her series, which the first book, phenomenal. If you're into uh, fantasy romance, I'd say dark fantasy romance. It's a great book. Um, and after that, I don't know. I, I still need to finish the, the Shadow and Bone series. I've been slacking. I've heard a lot about that series, and I'm just like, I need to read it. I need to read it. But you know you get into um, meeting people that write, and you just want to, like, read everything. So I just keep buying things on Kindle, and I just keep wanting to read everything. So I'm afraid to add anything else because it's just growing and growing. Right. <laughs> you TBR. Like, it's always full, always full. Oh, for, sure. for sure. But that's the, I think that's the fun thing. Like um, people trying to support each other as authors is like a huge thing that I've noticed. Um, and even narrators, like even narrators and authors kind of like pairing up now to like do like the little like excerpts that they're doing or like they're like the um, narration station that SEZL runs. Um, other people run it too. It's just leaving my brain right now. But she has like, you know, people submit and narrators is like, it's just like three hours on TikTok live of narrators reading excerpts. And it's just like, it's so fun. It just, I feel like the community is super supportive in the virtual realm. Um, and it's hard to find that support in real life. Do you, do you have that same experience or, you know, do you find like the people that you're connecting with online kind of like are more into your work than people in your personal life? Or do you have a fair amount of both? I'd say I have a fair amount of both. Um, my family, um, both my wife, my daughter, and then my mom, dad, brother, sister, um, nieces and nephews, they're they're all super supportive and 
have been pumping my book out to whoever they could. And then of course the wonderful book talk community has just been amazing to be a part of. Uh, it, it's, it's difficult, you know, cause you, you try to give back as much as you can, but these, these people are going out of your way, out of their way to support you. It's, it's amazing. So you just had, um, not too long ago, have you seen Sarah Baker narrated and released as audiobook by a pretty amazing narrator. What was that like for you hearing your book being read by like one of the most amazing narrators in existence? So having my book narrated by Angelina Rocca was uh, a terrifying experience because like you said, she is very, very good. And here I am like, hey, narrate my book. Like the publisher signed off, the Tantor signed off. You get to narrate it. And then she is on live TikToks narrating it. And I'm like, oh God, I want to watch, but I can't watch, but I want to watch. Like it's, it's like, is my writing good enough for Angelina Rocca to be narrating this? I don't know, but um, we're going to find out. So definitely, definitely some uh, imposter syndrome moments with that. As far as how she did with it, she did phenomenal. Um, I, I was a bit concerned how she would handle Mills's voice because he's kind of rough and rugged, um, rough around the edges, country sheriff, um, but she knocked it out of the park. She really did. I kept picturing Mills, like, Mills kind of like a Longmire. I don't know if you saw that show. Longmire type of guy, just super like rough around the edges. Like I loved him, but she did a great job with all the voices. Like it's hard. I don't think that female narrators get enough credit when it comes to the male voices that they're able to portray, you know? Um, and I think a lot of them don't realize they can do it um, until they do, but she, she nailed his voice. I was surprised. She, all the male voices, mm -hmm. like, like the whole book is just like with one person narrating because there's so much different types of narration happening now. Um, I was curious because her voice is so smooth, but she freaking did so good. Right. And that's, that was my concern. Like she does have a very smooth voice and Mills obviously doesn't. It's uh, ridden with whiskey and tar from cigarettes for the past 30 years. So um, to have Angelina try to pull that off. I was like, Oh no, what, how's she going to do this? And I, I remember specifically, she said, um, so I just finished your book. My throat hurts. I'm sorry. Just the Mills voice alone. <laughs> Must have been a lot on her. <laughs> yes. And, and she, she did that in like a matter of two weeks or so. She had like a crazy deadline, but she squeezed me in because, you know, I've been telling her for, probably a year at that point that, Hey, I need you to narrate this. You got to narrate it. And so I was happy she was able to. I have, I don't feel as crazy now. Cause I've messaged a few narrators for like my vampire voices. I'm like, you sound like my vampire and I can't afford you yet, but one day I will afford you. So <laughs> hi. <laughs> yes. Yes. And I'm sure they love that. I'm, I'm sure that, you know, and, exactly what you're talking about earlier about the narrate narration station, you know, you're having these narrators who want to be heard. And then at the same time, you have these authors that want their work heard and or read at the same time. So it's just amazing support network that they have going, um, giving both the narrator and the authors a chance to have their work shown. In your opinion, what was the hardest part about writing and finishing this particular book? This is something I will never, ever do again in my writing career is write a dual timeline book. Because this was the most difficult part about writing this book, because there's two separate timelines before and after Sarah was taken. and if something didn't match in the after, it affected the before. The dates were, they had to all seamlessly line up to a single point and then go after that as well. So it, it was the biggest pain in the ass I ever signed myself up to do. I volunteered as tribute and I will regret it, but it worked out in the end. Um, 
<laughs> never, never again, though. Never again. You did it well. Um, I was you. not confused at all. And I have ADHD, so I get confused very easily. Um, but I I thought you did it very well because I'm thinking, like, I can't even write, like, a flashback, <laughs> like, a memory. Like, you know, so for you to do all of that throughout the whole book and keep it consistent and going, uh, you did an amazing job. <laughs> but I could see why um, it would be hard to do it again. No, uh, it, it was butterfly effect you know i mess up one chapter and everything goes to shit so that's that was what i was up against the entire time i was writing it and that's why my support network of betas and critique partners were that much more important to catch that kind of stuff yeah i love that and people i know a lot of people that would be like when they were helping me with just my little novella like i'm so sorry that i said this um but this this confused me and threw me off so like you have to really learn how to take criticism from those specific people because you've asked them to do that job. So, and there's times where they'll make a suggestion and you're just like, wow, like that's a perfect, that's a perfect suggestion. Like I never would have thought about that or, you know, like, or you're right. stuck in a sentence and they're like, just say this. And it's like one word switch. And you're like, what? <laughs> that fixed the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Super important. So, you know, do you do, what are you doing to promote this book? Do you, are you going, do you do book signings? Are you doing any like book um, conferences or, you know, like there's all the different signing things that happen. And what do they call, I, I want to say book fairs, but that's not what it's called. Like the book conferences, like do, are you doing any of that coming up? Uh, I am signed up for three so far. Um, so Sarah Baker released May 4th of last year. Mostly, I've just been promoting on TikTok and um, other social medias. I did a book signing at Barnes & Noble a couple towns away. That was fun. Um, it was a good experience. And then I also did Imaginarium in Louisville, Kentucky for, um, I think that was in August or July, something like that. But I'm signed up for, uh, the first one's going to be Books and Beaches in Lincoln City, Oregon. That is the first weekend of August. That's going to be a lot of fun. The second one's going to be Simple Signings. That's September 20th and 21st, if I'm not mistaken. And that's going to be a ton of fun if you haven't seen the ongoing battle between myself and the influencers on TikTok right now um, who are not invited to Disney Karaoke Night. Then the third one I'm going to be doing... Um, what is it called? Booked in Chaos. That's in South Carolina. So just just a couple, not not a not too much, nothing overwhelming, but enough to have some fun. That's really fun. It sounds like I mean, it sounds yeah, it sounds like a lot of travel, but it sounds like a lot of fun too. You get to meet everybody. Um, will you have any like special edition copies for sale there, or you know, um, I know some people do like like different types of like hardbacks or you know stuff like that uh i it's tough because i do have a publisher with this book it's a small press um so getting to be able to do something like a special edition that's something that could take months or years to figure out with them but i will absolutely be selling my book boxes filled with a signed copy exclusive mug all kinds of uh, fun stuff in there, potentially handcuffs. Who knows what else is going to go in those boxes? You have to have the, you have to have the handcuffs. Got to have the handcuffs. Not cool, but like. <laughs> <laughs> people buy it for handcuffs alone. <laughs> I just bought the book box for the handcuffs. I don't need the book. <laughs> I mean, there's parts of Book Talk where. <laughs> oh, yes. Yes, there definitely are. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, so is there anything that you didn't get to talk about like when it comes to the book? Oh no, that was my question. Was was there like a mourning period after you finished the book? Like after you had like your final copy done, were you just like bummed out that you didn't get to be with your characters anymore? Um you know, I miss Mills. Oh I I miss writing that character. Um 
whether he's alive or dead, who knows. But <laughs> I do miss the character, and I've definitely thought of doing kind of prequel novels with him, or at least one, um, and then maybe a sequel to this one. So yes, I, I definitely do miss the city of Fulton and writing these characters in this small town where just unimaginable shit happens. Yeah, I'd imagine like like Mills is already kind of like he's kind of like grumpy old man when we see him, but he was definitely probably like wild young guy like as a sheriff. Wild stallion. A that wild sheriff, stallion. <laughs> that, that deputy Mills, that stallion. Like I want to know, like why is he such a hard ass? Like. <laughs> yeah, there's there's a lot of reasons um, that aren't. Do you have explained. character profiles like that that you didn't get to kind of put in the book, like each. One has like a backstory that we might not see, but it helped you write them. Uh, there's definitely a backstory to Mills. Uh, I, I could share this here because there's no spoiler, but uh, you remember the high school secretary, Janice? Yeah. So it, it kind of hinted at it, but Janice and Mills were a thing um, back in his heyday. And Janice got pregnant. Mills wanted to keep the baby and join the army and take care of her and get out of Fulton. And Janice um, did not. So that's one kind of small telling into why he's such a dick to Janice. <laughs> I noticed that tension. Oh, right <laughs> um, getting a band with Mills at some point. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So there, there's a lot to unpack there with Mills. And that's why I kind of thought it would be a little bit fun to toy around with that in the sequel. And for all my romance people, there is romance in this book. And there's a good spice scene. And I'm going to leave it at that. <laughs> I approved. Of <laughs> Not that I'm the authority, but you know. <laughs> spice approved. We got the stamp. So, yes. Um, but yeah, that's, I think you integrated that well is another thing. You integrated like the different relationships between the people in the book, whether it's romance, friendship, coworker, um, you know, you made me so confused so many times with the characters and I can't even talk about it. You guys <laughs> have to read the book. Um, but I was just, so many times, I was just so mad at you. I just had to go. <laughs> uh, if first, I, first it was like, why are you doing her like that? And then you're like, oh, and then you're like, oh, well, why are you doing her like that? Why are you doing him like that? Like, <laughs> there, there was a reason for everything um is the best way i could put it everything i didn't do anything in this book without purpose so for those that are planning on picking this up um make sure you're watching very closely on everything that's going on because it's for a reason and, and if you read it a second time like i know a lot have which have messaged me like hey i didn't see this in the first time i read it i don't know how i missed it um and that was kind of the point. I wanted to sprinkle little Easter eggs around. So when you finally get to that uh, what the fuck moment, um, some of it might tie together. Yeah, I read it one time. I read the physical and then I listened to it twice. So you listened to it twice? Listened to it twice. I told you. <laughs> <laughs> I just had to because, like, first it was just for fun when it came out. Mm hmm. Because, you know, it was, I read the book, so like I wanted to listen to the book. And then the second time was, I think, after I asked you to come on. So I was like, okay, well, now I need to listen to it again to make sure. Like, I, I had, I was, I had all these things I wanted to say about the book that I couldn't say on here. Cause remember, I was like, oh, I'm so mad at you, but I can't say it. I'm saving it for the podcast. And I was like, wait, like, you can't do spoilers on the podcast. So you have to tell him now. So. <laughs> Yeah, and that, that's the unfortunate thing with this book is... You just got like a 3 a.m. message, fuck you. <laughs> well, you. <laughs> that, too, that too, and that has happened a lot. Like, it, I get a lot of messages like, what the fuck did you do? Why would you do that? Um, but the hardest thing is doing interviews or lives and people asking about the book. It's like, um, well, it's a book. I can't tell you too much without spoiling it. Uh, I mean, uh, it's a book about a missing teacher and a rough sheriff trying to find her. 
That's literally all I can say without spoiling it. Yep, I'm biting my tongue a lot during this interview. It's so much easier to talk about UFO books because <laughs> there's no spoilers. Like we know. Uh, my, my third book is going to be a UFO book. Um, no, it's not. Seriously. <laughs> no, I was, uh, that was a joke. So mad. <laughs> He's going to write a book for me, guys. He just said it. <laughs> um, I mean, I can probably pull off a, a UFO a thriller. Job. I I wrote like the little mini space thing and as, as UFO and spacey as I am, that was hard because I'm not really like a sci-fi writer. Mm -hmm. um, I just, I like vampires and that's what I read monsters. So that's then what I tend to write about. But I was like, man, all this sci-fi stuff, like it's hard to write it because you don't want to make them science nerds mad. Like one of my <laughs> friends husband's like, I personally would have gone with black matter on that part, but you know, it's a personal <laughs> preference. I'm like, bro, oh, you work for NASA. You don't want to talk to me. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that'd that, that'd be tough. Um, but but at the same time, it's like you were doing a course for to become a coroner. Is that what you're going to become? Um, I wanted to do forensic pathology, but then I just I, then I moved to molecular biology. So I mean, it's I just the same like stopped thing. everything because I was like. Mm. <laughs> It's kind of the same case because I don't know what the fuck I'm doing with any of that, but I had to try and um, describe that in detail. So I think it, it comes, it's with any kind of writing, you know, you, you, you jump out of your comfort zone and try to um, include a lot of different stuff that you know nothing about. <laughs> <laughs> like like black matter and ufos <laughs> right i'm like it's a, it's a fake story like let me just make things up <laughs> i'm gonna have to start having the podcast at midnight midnight so, yeah we're, we're going full vampire it's kidding <laughs> you're like good thing i got on the nine o'clock one <laughs> um that's the only time the house is quiet yeah so, <laughs> um, no, yeah. so do you, are you pretty good at saying I'm on task? Because I know a lot of writers experience like, oh, I'm writing a book and then you get an idea for another one. Now, do you, you have your work in progress, but do you have little weird side things happening that you have to write about too? Um, I don't mean so weird. I, in the way. Weird always is good to me. So, well, no, 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 no I, I, none taken, but it's funny you say that because I've already written a, a side novella for a seven part series um, that I wrote in between working on this work in progress. So I, I finished that. That was about another 21,000 words. Oh, and cool. I'm just, yeah, yeah. It's, it's just resting right now. I'm letting it breathe before I go back to it. It's going to be uh, a paranormal thriller. And mm -hmm. I know you, I know you love your monsters. So mm -hmm. this one, this one's gonna be um, the first book in the Supernatural Sins series. Wow, I already like it. I like the title. I'm like I'm in. <laughs> Sign up. <laughs> yeah, it, it it just it was an idea that came to me, and I was like, you know, this sounds like a lot of fun. I started working on book two, and then I was like, stop it, you know, stop getting distracted. You need to finish this thriller. Right. You, you're a quarter of the way there. Just finish the fucking book. So I. Uh, held off and went back to my thriller. Yeah, I started writing like a horror romance and I want it to be out by Halloween, which sounds far away, but it's not when it comes to writing. Mm -hmm. um, I'm gonna keep it novella size. Mm -hmm. I still have like vampires to write about. And I keep doing that thing too, where I'm like, I need to be editing the novel and I'm already writing novel too. Like at 3 a.m. I'm just like, but I thought of this scene. <laughs> exactly. You, you never know when it's gonna hit you. and. and some ideas sound better than others and you're just like oh, fuck that book i'm gonna work on this one like this is the one so i completely understand um <laughs> i have too many projects that's i think that's my biggest curse i have these two three and then at least another eight in the chamber that i want to write so It'll it's be a problem, problem, right? Because you have books to write for the rest of your life. <laughs> yeah, but I'm a big procrastinator. 
who knows when they're gonna get written. Look at this. This book is so good. My wife and I listen to it. Do I see? I listen oh. to it as well. And for anybody that wants to be uppity, listening is the same as reading. It's the same words. Not everybody can sit down and read. So if you're listening, you're like, listening's not reading, go away. Because I like to I like both. Um I switch back and forth, but I do like having like the Kindle and being able to listen to it at the same time. So thank you, David. That's awesome. I'm saying thank you for you. Sorry. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks. No, you're good. Thanks, I'll Dave. For him, all right. Appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> so now I lost my shot because I got wild. Um, so you have all these projects going on. Do you ever feel like a crazy person when you, cause do you think, I think that acting and writing are the two weirdest things. Acting, it's just a bunch of people playing pretend. And that ruins movies for me all the time. Cause I'll be like into a movie and my brain will be like, Psst. they're like, they're just dressing up and playing pretend. And then it ruins the movie and I have to watch it again later. But I do the same thing with like writing. Like we literally will like sit here either in front of a screen or if you like to write things down physically or you like kind of watch it in your head, like a movie for a little bit before you're like, okay, yeah, I got to write that down. Like, do you ever feel like a crazy person? Because to, to write or to act and this goes for narration as well. Like you have to like live in your head for an extended period of time. I, uh, I can't speak for all writers, but I can say for me, I am 1000% in my head most of the day. Um, it doesn't matter what I'm doing. I could be driving to work. I could be doing my job. I could be at home cooking dinner. I could be hanging out with my kid or playing with my dog. I'm in my head and there's stories going on up there and I can't get them to shut up. And so that's, I, I think we're all a little bit uh, crazy. Well, you're not alone because I do the same thing. I'm like, hmm. <laughs> How did I end up in Pennsylvania? Because I was imagining my book just driving down the road. <laughs> That's never really happened. Um, completely. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, I always, or you come up with like, for your, I mean, like you, you said you're not, you come up with these dark scenes. Like, do you ever just think of something and be like, man, that was, what the hell is wrong with me? Like, what sort of weirdo just thinks of this like at midnight or 1 a.m.? Like, you wake up and you're just like, idea and then or like you're doing something perfectly normal like like i do wife things right like washing the dishes or you know taking the kids to do jitsu and i'm just watching them fight and i'm just like what if and then it's not related to what's around me it's just something come <laughs> my brain i've got dark romance brain so like the jiu-jitsu turns into a zombie and starts <laughs> um yes yes i i will agree um there's you're going to get those random thoughts that just kind of pop in your head while you're washing dishes. What if the next thought is, what if I take this plate, smash it on the counter and slice it? You know what I'm talking about? Like it, it happens. I yeah. Agree. But it's really the author, like creative people in general, like whether you're a painter or a musician, a writer or an actor, voice actor, everything creative, like you could be doing one thing and be living like a simultaneous life in your brain. Like you're oh, either yeah. writing a song and it's not even related to what you're doing. Mm -hmm. You're just there doing it in your head, but you're also doing this other task. I live in my head rent free. Um, <laughs> you know, <laughs> I live in my own head rent free uh, most of the time. Um, I could be having a full on conversation with someone, and in my head, I'm just thinking, did, did I finish this chapter off in the right way? Um, <laughs> kind of deal. <laughs> you, you know, and it's tough. It, it's hard living in your own headspace for so long you got to take breaks because when you're writing shit that's just dark and <laughs> fucked up uh, you know you your mind you might not uh come across so pleasant to people <laughs> oh for sure for sure especially if you got a little mills sitting on your shoulder giving you advice <laughs> Someone says, "Hey, how's your day going?" Ugh, it fucking sucks. Like, I, was <laughs> I, was in the coffee. <laughs> I need whiskey. <laughs> I need but I have more. a good heart. Hey, but I have a good heart. <laughs> but, 
that's all that counts. It's all about the good heart, right? You can be just as twisted as you want, as long as your inside is nice to somebody. <laughs> well, imagine writing like like vampire stuff like me. Like it it gets weird. Like I'm, my head is so weird. Do you ever dream about your characters? I can't. Well, it depends because I've written books based off dreams, but I've never written a book and had a dream about that character. Have you ever looked into lucid dreaming as a creative tool? 100%. And I've done it once, just once. Mm -hmm. um, it was wild. Was it for a book? That. Was it for a book or a scene or with a character? Or was it something just that? Oh, no, it was just it was just for me. No, fuck the books. The, the, this lucid <laughs> dream was mine. <laughs> All right. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, I write dark romance, so you know, like I, I don't mind um, conjuring a vampire into a dream in lucid dreaming. <laughs> but <laughs> no, um, yeah, lucid lucid dreaming is crazy. Like to be completely conscious while you're dreaming and to know that you're dream. Oh, this it's an insane experience. Um, <laughs> I have tried so many times to recreate that. I think I think I was just given one, and that's it. <laughs> that's all I'm gonna get. Yeah, a lot of people will do that with like I don't want to say a lot of people, but a lot of like dream. Like I'm I'm a witch too, so like I do weird <laughs> stuff anyway. So like a lot a lot of exercises that you do to start working in dream time or doing stuff in dream time is like you focus on an image before bed. And this could be like a tarot card. It could be like a picture of a book or like character art. For me, I was doing character art um, with these vampires. And I was just like, finally was in a dream. And it took a while. It's not like, like I know how to lucid dream. And this still took a while because I'd never done like focused lucid dreaming. Mm -hmm. Like I want to have a dream with this specific character. And I was like thinking about it night after night and finally it happened and he scared the shit out of me. And, but I did get to see the building. I says walking around the building that I wrote about in the book. Mm -hmm. and that was freaking sweet. So it didn't last very long because he scared me, but. <laughs> oh, that's a shame. Less romance. I just thought less romance, too much scale. <laughs> no, I, I, I need to write him oh. less dark, <laughs> a little less <laughs> creepy. Cause I was just like, this is sweet. Like he's here. Like I'm going to do dream research. <laughs> and then it was like, he, he is as somebody put an alpha hole in the books. So like he was an alpha hole in the lucid dream. And I just, I had, I broke it because it, it caught me off guard because I was controlling the dream. And the next thing I know it, I got scared and it like threw me off the lucid dreaming um, uh -oh. situation. Cause if you, if you don't focus, then you can lose grip of like, the control aspect of it so right. our practice but yeah just just hang pictures of your your characters next to you before bed i don't want to hang out with my characters because all my characters get <laughs> emotionally damaged and or physically damaged that's true <laughs> yeah, so, I, don't, I don't want to hang out with any of my characters i'm gonna hang out with someone else's characters yeah, because what if you make friends with one of them in a dream and you have a problem like doing horrible things to them in the book that you had planned? So, uh, no, I won't have any problem. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, buddy. <laughs> I know we hung out in dream time, but um, if it's your time, it's your time. <laughs> it's, hey, hey, I didn't write the okay, I wrote the book, but it's your time to go. <laughs> We're sticking with my plot points, all right? <laughs> There's a sticky note that says, you will unalive and die. Both, two times. Yeah. Um, so we are coming up on the hour. Is there anything you didn't get to talk about that you want to talk about? Um, I, uh, that's a tough question. That's, a very, that's the hardest question you've asked. Uh, yeah. I think you've gone over everything. I just like to write i love people to read my work i don't care if you love it or hate it if you just like to read you know might want to check it out all right so if you read things <laughs> if you read things i <laughs> I, I write things you write stuff you gotta read the stuff <laughs> so this is the book again hold it up to amir if you can't read backwards you can't be my friend i'm sorry you know we have packs here with demons you gotta read backwards um so 
thank you so much for coming on. Thanks to everybody that joined in the live chat. Uh, thanks to everybody listening now, later, wherever you are. Uh, hang out for a minute when I end the live. And guys, I'm going to get this stuff on Spotify. That's going to be like my next mission to get at least this year's up on Spotify because I'm, I'm back in the flow of things. I'm getting more and more people on. I'm doing more than one show a month, which um, for the whole past year, I was only doing like one a month because I was just not in the headspace. I didn't know what I wanted, where I wanted to take the podcast. So now that I've just been like, you know what? Like, why do I have to have a thing? It's, it's a book podcast. I can have any kind of author I want. It could be an astrophysicist writing a book, or it could be somebody writing about monster smut, or it could be somebody writing something, you know, dark and disturbing, but really good like this one. So thank you so much for coming on, um, hang out backstage, and I'm going to end it now. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, everyone.